That's not what it says. What does it say? It says <laughs> elephant. That was for him, not you. No, on the bottom. We are live in the studio. Plus one, <laughs> minus one. <laughs> Another episode of Above Average Black Men. Your truly from the senior. Chris Jr., as always, here to empower, inspire, and uplift the community. You might hear some additional noise going on right now. In we, the mix. we have different <laughs> sound effects right now. <laughs> He's not going to be with us long, though. <laughs> Yeah, hey, but welcome, welcome to another episode. Let's get it started. Yeah, let's get it started. You know, I feel like in, in honor of Devin, I don't know if Mackenzie's going to be able to do this one for us, but make sure you like, <laughs> follow, subscribe on all platforms. We're on Spotify, YouTube. Are we on Apple yet? Not, Not yet, yet. We'll get Spotify, there. YouTube, iHeartRadio, Podbean. Like it's delicious for everybody. Facebook, it's YouTube, to keep Instagram, yeah. <laughs> but make sure you like, follow, subscribe, come, comment with us, share your thoughts, share your opinions, share topics that you might want us to talk about, share individuals that you might want us to connect with. Definitely want to continue to kind of build on the conversations that we had and expand our community here. But um, excited for tonight's topic, Dad. Do you want to kind of bring that to the Yeah, man, I got, I got my sound effects over here. <laughs> like, you can mix it. <laughs> yeah, we're going really to talk about um, the topic is um, what you invest in will determine who you are. That's the topic, man. And what I mean is um, if you are, for instance, if, if you don't invest in yourself, you know, you can never be successful. You know what you put in yourself if you put a lot of garbage in or if you put a lot of stuff in yourself man it makes no sense like it's somebody i know now who, Mackenzie, who i'm talking to and you know he's not doing anything positive but he thinks he's going to turn out positive you know and what happens is is like and I, I use a basketball analogy if you use your if you're right-handed you can work on your left hand all you want but if you don't trust it what happens when you get in trouble you go back to your right hand and i think a lot of people don't realize the stuff they're putting in is not setting them up for success. It's setting them up for failure. Um, I know your favorite, like in relationships, you like talking about relationships. Same thing in relationships. You have to invest in a relationship and invest in yourself. If not, it's going to go stagnant. Eventually, it's going to die. Yeah, and I think uh, investing kind of, you know, most people, I don't know if you really think about it in terms of like money aspect, but I certainly do. Like if that comes to mind, like investing in terms of, it's very similar, like, you know, what you put in, you actually get out. Sometimes there's highs, sometimes there's lows, like with the market. So I think, uh, you know, people don't think of kind of what they're investing in a lot of times with their time and effort and attention and don't understand that, you know, what you put in is what you get out. Yeah, but I think people, when they hear say investments, right? It's I think they all, everybody thinks finance. But it's also about um, relationships, um, your job, um, almost every area of your life. Like if you're on the job and you want to get promoted, you got to learn the job. And you got to learn the other skills you need to be successful. So you got to invest in yourself. You can't just go to work, be at 8 o'clock, and get off at 5 o'clock and go home and do that every day and expect somebody to promote you. Um, if you're in a relationship, the same thing. You know, um, you want to grow and you want your, your spouse, your mate to grow. You know, that means you got to invest in yourself. Uh, you know, we went down to the um, Black History Museum. You know, and that's the per- and man, it, it really, it really hit home when I was in there walking around. You know, we got a chance to see the whole the whole museum. We spent the whole day in there to see um, history. Mm-hmm. You know, and where we've been and where we come from, and how you know it's a whole generation after generation, generation investing in themselves, becoming educated. You know, learning the craft. You know passing it on so it gets better with every generation so whether it's music whether it was sports whether it was literature you know in every aspect of life mm-hmm. you know to see like wow man you know these people invest themselves the time they put in you know to, to get to where they want to get i don't think people look at it as investing like i think they it's funny like of course you, we use the sports analogy because that's what we kind of the world around that we grew up in. Yeah. Um, but even like, I don't think we looked at it 
kind of an idea of investing. It was just more so like, all right, this is practice, or um, you just kind of going through the motions to do things without mm-hmm. thinking that you know where you invest your time and effort, or where you even put your attention at, or two is like you know what you get on the end of that. You know, kind of you reap what you sow at the end of the day. You know, like what you put in is certainly what comes out. And I think on the opposite end of investing, like some people don't invest in the wisest of ways. You know what I mean? Like they're they're investing time in things that are more, I would say, a waste or a detriment to them. But that's why I think if you look around, um, for instance, um, if if I'm saying I want to be a better husband, but I keep doing the same stuff every day, I'm never going to get better. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying you got to go out and compare yourself to somebody else, but what are the things that you're lacking? You know, um, you may need to be around different people to learn different things. It's, it's you know, when I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I had to invest in myself. I couldn't just say I'm going to start a business and stay the same every day. I had to get better. I had to read books. I had to listen to certain people. You know, I had to gleam and, and try to figure out what works, what's my avenue, what's my skill. And even now, as I get older, yeah. you know, um, I can't just sit around and eat french fries and hamburgers. <laughs> You know, and say, man, I want to be in shape. So you have to invest in yourself. And I think too many of us, we fail to reach our dreams or we become stagnant because we don't invest in ourselves. I think people don't realize or understand when you don't invest in yourself, you're still producing an outcome. You know, like when you do invest in yourself or like take the time to, uh, whether that's better yourself through reading or better yourself through listening to audio books or like just, Kind of putting yourself in different experiences, like trying to, you know, invest in yourself, maybe different cultures. Um, I think not doing anything is a way of investing in a way, you know, where if you're not doing anything, you're staying stagnant. Or in some cases, you regress. And I think, like I said, if I go back to the, to the, to the um, to museum, and I go back to, to African Americans, you know, we're not investing when, in anything. When we didn't right have now. a lot, we were investing in ourselves. We were reading. We were investing in our communities. We were supporting black businesses. You know, um, we were doing all those things. Uh-huh. But then we got to a point when it was almost generation. We felt like we kind of robbed. We stopped doing it. You know, we don't value education anymore. Um, I was talking to some people on Monday. We were talking on um, Tuesday. We were talking about voting. And people says, well, I, you know, well, I don't vote. You know, I go out, I march, I do all this. I said, yeah, but people died so I you march. could vote. Yeah. You know, people died, literally died. So you can vote. And and back in the day, we thought learn we thought we honestly felt, I still do, but some people don't, that we were investing ourselves in our community and our race by fighting for the right to vote. Mm-hmm. You know, we wanted to be able to say things and, and, and have input. You know, and now we kind of fast forward. We don't what do we invest in now? We don't invest in our schools. A lot of our schools are are in the city schools are the worst. It's not like we don't have black millionaires. It's not like we don't have black politicians. You know, um, even, you know, the divorce rate is crazy because people, maybe one person is and somebody's not investing in themselves. They just, you know, and I know this is right up your alley, but I'm just along for the ride, you know. So I think those are the things that we got to start thinking about and why it's important to invest. And we gotta, I don't think people see the worth in investing or even kind of think I about or consider it. I think something that you mentioned in reference early on is that people just kind of want or see outcomes. You know what I mean? I want to be rich. I want to be this. I want to be that. But they don't think about, you know, I need to invest in, for instance, like I'm, I'm writing, you know what I mean? I started yeah. writing scripts and I want to get into production. Started from nothing. Like, I don't know anything. Yeah. Had to invest the time into actually learning, like 101 basics of fundamentals of writing and storytelling. Uh, then it was kind of taking it up another step or a notch, you know, after kind of investing that time into that. It's like investing time in the next thing to continue to level up and like constant pushing yourself. And I don't think people really think about that. Again, I could easily, I want to make a movie and just kind of jump in front of a camera and what? do these things. Or I could invest the time into really learning and understanding the tricks of the trade, starting from zero to build something that's long lasting. But it also has to be a, a, a certain amount of selflessness, you know, because when you're selfish, it's all about you. So you don't see the need to invest in yourself. But when you are attached to somebody, or you have goals and you realize that it can be generational. Mm-hmm. Or-
the implications are, are a little wider spread. You know, you see the you see the value in investing in yourself. You see the value of reaping and so on. I'm so seized. I'm ripped the benefits. I'm not just going to reap the benefits, but it can be generational. Yeah. But yeah. I think as a people, we stop investing in ourselves. We don't read the way we used to read. We don't value education the way we used to value education. You know, we spend more time looking at reality TV shows. You know, or, or are you on the phone, yeah. we on that the, social the media, Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. TikTok, you know, all the social media stuff. Yeah, yeah, the quick fixes. Yeah. I will say, um, I will say, uh, I don't know if you kind of touched on and maybe think of it while you're thinking about writing, but I don't, uh, I don't think people have the patience anymore. But that goes back to investing in yourself yeah. because microwave. You can't. It's like, for instance, if, if I plant, if I plant a rose bush, you know, when I plant it and I water it. I'm not gonna come out the next day, man, and have this whole <laughs> rose bush. You know, I have to water, take care of it, I have to take the weeds out. It's gonna take a minute. And I think it's the same way when you're investing in yourself. Anything that you put in yourself right away that that's gonna be instant, it's not sustainable. Yeah. It's yeah. not. I mean, I, that's why so many people hit the lottery, they end up broke. Because when you invest in yourself, you value the work it takes to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. When somebody gives you something, most people don't. You know, and that's why people at the lottery, they didn't work for that. They bought a ticket. They got rich. Now it's like, hey, you know, yeah. I just, yeah. And, and I think that's another reason why we live in a time now where it's such a strong sense of entitlement, you know, because people, want, they don't want to invest. They want you to give them something. Yeah. And I mean, I think yeah. that certainly kind of contributes to, you know, how society yeah. is at the moment. Like people want handouts like you know what i mean or they want this quick guide to success like um again relating it to the start market yeah. start market and investing like when you invest it don't always hit you know what i mean or sometimes it takes time you don't necessarily yeah. see the results right away like some days it'll be green and some days are red but that's like, why people don't really feel market. stagnant stagnant that's why people don't play and, you know and, and that's why some people don't invest in themselves for yeah, that but, reason too. And, and I get like Gary just made a comment. Too many people are investing in the world and not God or humanity. And I agree. But even in the church, we have people who, who they don't invest in themselves. They don't study. They don't, you know, they don't try to grow themselves and just see God as a vending machine. They, you know, they're not trying to make themselves better or, you know, I'm just going to pray. I'm still act like an idiot. I'm just going to pray. He's just going to fix it. So no matter what you do, even in our see message from a spiritual aspect, investing in yourself means you got to read. You know, um, no different for if you trying to if you're trying to be a, a if you have an occupation, you're trying to hone yeah. your skills, you're trying to get right. good. You you got to invest in what you're doing. And people, patience is part of it. Patience. And I think another part of it is, is instant gratification. <laughs> we live in a time now where folk are used to instant gratification. I mean, everything is is microwavable. Now. Everything, everything is microwavable now. So, so that's what people yeah. think success looks like, but or I, like whatever it is, their goals. I use the be. analogy when I was Boom. growing up, we had Jiffy Pop. You had to put the thing and put it over the stove when mm -hmm. you shake it and the yeah, corners yeah. popped and the thing. But well, we had popcorn. Believe it or not, I now you just put point time. Yeah, now you put the microwave, just walk away. Yeah. You know, when I grew up, two minutes, you, know, seconds. you know, toaster ovens was the great adventure. It was the great adventure, man. Yo, toaster ovens, but you had to cook it. You know, I can't believe it. You know, you had a toaster, but you wasn't, you know, you coasted or you nah. cooked. You mm -hmm. actually cooked. Toaster ovens sped up the process. So, I mean, now we in a time, man, you know, Everybody is using it now is even more because air fries now. You put an air fryer set up, you just walk away. But I think that's even more of a reason now where uh it's probably even more important to take the time to invest in yourself when so many other people are not. Like that's how you really can separate yourself from the pack. It's just doing what other people aren't necessarily willing to do. And I mean, unfortunately, but, it seems like the bar is probably set pretty low. So it's, it doesn't seem like you got to jump through hoops and do things that are crazy to separate yourself from the pack. Like, for, and we talk about reading, you can literally read 10 minutes every day. It will set you leaps and bounds further than anyone else if you do that for well, a month, but I'm gonna tell two you, months, three I'm months, a, a year. I'm going to tell you what's funny. I heard somebody say this this morning when I was listening to the book this morning, and, and I never thought about it like this. And somebody said, it's funny because you would think if really, he says, if you go back in time where the fastest thing was a horse, you know, and that's the pace of society we were at. Mm -hmm. People were reading books. People were taking their time. People were reading. He says, then they invented the car, sped up, so society sped up. So he said, it's funny because even though we have access to more information, you know, even though theoretically 
we have the same amount of time. We have less time because we got so many things going on right now. Yeah. So people don't take the time to invest in themselves. It's, people don't take the time to research. People don't take time to say, how can I be better? I just want this promotion. I just want this job. You know, or, or you owe me something. You know, my brother. You know, it's which actually I, kind of funny to think about, like when you said, yeah. like just how, you know, with transportation, things got faster a little bit. Technology certainly kind of led to that too. Yeah, yeah and I, I do think the world's that, better, right? But and I think back in the day when people were reading, it was like you ain't had nothing to do, you ain't had nothing better to do with your time. <laughs> well, even, read and like things are so there, but now everything's just boom, boom. Well, quick, you had quick, quick. Well, you, it's not that you have anything better to do with your time. I mean, they understood the value of education because yeah, they yeah. saw the gap. They saw the only way. I, mean, that, the, though, I, mean, I know what you mean, but I'm saying the only way to participate in the so-called American dream was is, is to be somewhat educated. Right. If you earned a farm, you didn't know how to count your money, you know, because they were ripping you off. Yeah, I go back to the museum. People were more willing to figure it out though back then versus yeah. where today is just uh, it's quick, and if I don't get it quick, it's uh, and I don't want, I'm not dumping on thing. us as black people, but I go back That's to everybody. I go back to to the museum. It was probably more Caucasians. Or as many called kings than it was African Americans. It's crazy. Who's soaking up the history? You know, I mean, soaking it up. You know, not just walking around talking they for. I mean, stopping, talk, examining stuff, having conversation. I mean, they were engaged. Mm. You know, and I was amazed. I tell you, I got in there. Man, I'm going back. I was like, man, I couldn't. You know, again, I was I was blown away because even though you know, because you read. When you see the visual stuff, you know, the, the stuff that you see um, in comedy. Mm-hmm. Moms made me Richard Pryor, man. You know, these are two icons in comedy, man. And how they made all all ethnic groups laugh. Everybody, no matter what you, you know, they just, they were universal. The comedy was universal. Mm-hmm. People went to see them, didn't matter if they was black or white, which is kind of ironic, but they mm-hmm. did. And they were funny. Well, when you look at the sports, he's the first black hockey player, man. Or or when you when you look at it and you see how far tennis has come because of the Venus is. You know, I mean, there's so many things that you look at. You look at our history, you know, on um, the basketball. You know, it's funny because we all know what Iverson did for basketball. But when you actually see the transition, it's like, wow. You know, yeah. like, yeah. You know, this dude changed the culture. You know, it's just amazing. And, and But those are all people who invest in themselves. Yeah. Those are people who say, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to hone my craft. Okay. You know, I'm going to be the best version of whoever I can be, you know, to get this done. I think uh, one thing that we probably touched upon that, Want to dig into a little bit more is that um, investing takes sacrifice. Yeah, Wait, good point. But, but you know what? That's an excellent point. That is an excellent point. It takes sacrifice. I give you a perfect example. Um, this is probably you probably yeah, I don't know if people always say you know hey what's up man oh I'd be doing better if I had your hand. People used to always say that, and so my response is, well it meant like if you're playing cards you had to do the hand. So my response would always be yeah, but if you had my hand you had to play the same game. Yeah, that's and that's the people that's don't want to, or too. people come to me now and say, "Hey, man, you know, I, you know, always wanted to have a nonprofit. I always wanted to do what you're doing." You know, they would come to me. Well, what do you do? And I said, "Okay, first of all, I say successful people have a routine. Successful people ain't sleeping at nine o'clock today, ten o'clock tomorrow, eleven o'clock the next day, you know, four o'clock. They have a routine. You know, their day is a, their day has a rhythm to it. You know, second of all, to your point, you got to give something up." You know, you can't be saying, I want to be, you know, I want to have a nonprofit. I want to go into school, talk to kids, but you out here drinking and smoking and getting high and hanging out with people who are likely to be arrested. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, or or you got to, what are you going to talk to them about? You're putting yourself in that position to be honest. But I think people, people, and you mentioned, I think was a great point. People, people go right to the outcomes. Mm -hmm. They go right to the outcomes. You know, don't understand it. No matter what you do to be successful, it's sacrificing you have to sacrifice. Yeah. And I think but I think we live in a society because even if you look at media, people don't get to sacrifice. They just think, okay, dude walked up, he just started hitting homers. And <laughs> LeBron just got, you know, he's 36 years old, still playing like he's 26 years old. People don't understand the sacrifice he makes for his body, the stuff he has to do to be prepared to play. He invests in himself because he believes in himself, which is the other part. You got to, I mean, do you do you believe in yourself enough to invest in yourself? I think, like, probably, again, comparing how, where we are now versus probably back in the day, like, when people had an idea or heard of something that they liked, I think it always went to, like, man, how can I do that? Figure it out, reading books. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like maybe we get so overwhelmed with just seeing people's successes 
and don't see anything yeah. else that again people just automatically assume or think like well why can't i just jump or have that it's like, success. you don't see the sacrifices and i think that's a huge problem people, they don't show you that like another example i heard a story about you know jason kidd who he's coming up and friday nights saturday nights he's going to the gym put up yeah. shots instead of going out and he had homies that were like make a problem like why are you doing this i mean you look at him now right <laughs> but you know it's funny too Nobody wants to hear that from certain people. But like but you know, yeah. like I was just thinking about our, we talk about sports a lot. Like LeBron James, yeah, from LeBron people don't want to. Hear from from yeah, okay, but, LeBron. But even this, okay, you're like, 16. Like, 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 like Jackie Robinson. You know, um, Jackie Robinson was Colin Kaepernick and all those guys before they were. Mm. You know, he was protesting, doing things, but you don't think you know he had to invest in himself and he had to make sacrifice to be successful. Right. You know, he knew he couldn't be average when he went to play because he's the first African American to play in, a, in you know, basically baseball. He knew he couldn't be average. He also had to sacrifice because he had to swallow his pride. Mm-hmm. His temperament Johnson. had to be. Yeah, his temperament had. But Jack Johnson was a little different. Though. He was a little cocky. <laughs> he, was like, he was like Muhammad Ali before Muhammad Ali was to the top. But yeah, but I think so. He understood it. Or Muhammad Ali. That's a perfect example. Muhammad Ali. He gave up the people don't understand. He gave up the best years of his boxing career for what he believed. Mm-hmm. But what he believed, he, he sacrificed, but he invested in himself because you know what? I'm going to be a person of character and integrity. Yeah. You know, so it is, it's amazing, man. But I think it goes back to some of what Gary said is, you know, how many of us think about our contributions, you know, that we're contributing to humanity? That is not just about us. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's just well, certain or another part of it, too, is that. Uh, the other side of investing isn't necessarily about just investing in yourself. Um, certainly kind of what you're investing or contributing to society or your community, you know? I mean, again, some people, we talk about if you're not investing in anything, no time, no effort, you're not talking to anybody. But we sit back and complain about all the things that oh, we, oh, are yeah. taking place. Oh, so yeah. it's like, uh, but if you're selfish, it's all about you. Mm-hmm. If, if it's selfish and you are a parent and you don't invest with yourself, it becomes like a generational curse because you're interested in poverty. So now your kids are interested in poverty unless something comes along with the cycle. You know, um, your spouse or their brother has to sacrifice and not have, you know, because you're not investing in yourself. So nothing gets better. Mm-hmm. Nothing changes. And you have generation after generation who stay in the projects. Generation after generation. I was poor. My daddy poor. My granddaddy was poor. You know, generation to generation, you know, I'm used to not having anything. You know, or like I said, you know, the population I work with, you know, substance abuse, you know, that's part of their problem, man. They don't invest in themselves. They're looking for the shortcut. Yeah. I mean, again, that's how looking we, we don't shortcut. invest in our communities. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the people. I don't think it's something that we consistently do. And it don't even necessarily have to be monetary because not everybody can always offer that. Of course, we do need the money. But... It can just be investing your time, maybe at a local rec center and working with kids, or uh, some local nonprofit that's working with kids or youth. Yeah. Like that is certainly Going a need out there. Like yeah. that's one thing I like that, that career day we did uh, at your old school. I think I'm glad you said that because I got some coming up. Greatest. No, but but even that, people will come to me and says, "Oh man, you know, yeah, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do." Like for instance, we had a day where we were going to be painting the school. Uh-huh. And people were, oh man, let me know That's when you're doing something. Of let me know when you're doing something. Yo, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. One person came. <laughs> and it was cool, but I'm just saying, one person came. But you came. know what's one upsetting person. or disheartening is we're going to see a ton of people online that are complaining right. about the schools, complaining mm-hmm. about the neighborhood, complaining about this or that. But then when we have people like yourself and other you know, community leaders that I know of, when it comes time to actually put yeah. action to these words, well, we, are we're going to go in and read. I'm looking for individuals. So we're going to go in and read the kids. Some kids in the lower grades. We're going mm-hmm. to read too. Um, there's a couple of things that you know I wanted to really do an MLK project. I got to figure out what it's going to look like this year. Um, but people don't understand that when you invest, it does pay dividends. Like for instance, um, if I'm helping kids, you know, dividends. Money. Well, because it, it, if you say I use my example, if I'm working with a group of young kids and I can help them. You know, be productive, positive citizens. It helps the community. It does. 
because they're not out there robbing, mugging, doing all the crazy stuff. You know, they're, poor, they're not writing graffiti or tearing stuff up. They are doing positive stuff in the community. So those little, you may think it's not a big deal, but it is. Yeah. You know, um, if you invest in your children and your children now make better decisions, you know, they marry somebody, they're getting involved in relationships. Most of the time, they're going to make better decisions. So it becomes generational. You know, um, and I go back to the part with, you know, the spiritual side of it. You know, people says, man, you know, you know, I, how did you get like that? And I'm far from perfect, but it takes time. I'm up 430 in the morning. You know how I get up in the morning. I get up, mm-hmm. I do my devotion, I do the stuff I got to do. That devotion goes out to almost 60 people. You know, that's not a two-minute thing. You know, like, not a two-minute read. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you know, we was on my heart, man. And you learn, you know, you know, it's, it's family is tough. I know. Family is tough, man, because your mom says the same thing. And I know y'all don't. I know sometimes y'all don't, because I get the heart like two seconds late. I'm like, come on, man. But anyway. I'm a quick reader. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm going to do it quick. I just hit the highlights. But, but, the, but the point I'm making is, yeah, but, but, but you, it's, it can't. And I think as a people, and I'm not trying to make this just about us, but as a people, there was a time, man. And and I say, I want to go to the museum with, with you, to, with you and with because I would love to get into the discussion about it, what we see. To get it, you know, to talk about it because I think that needs to happen. You know, um, you're going there to see, man, like everybody knows Chuck Berry had a whole bunch of cars, you know, but to go in and hear why he had all those cars, you know, um, you know, how he was able to go, you know, the very fear that wouldn't let him in, he was able to go back to NBA headline, you know, or you know, Denzel Washington, who who tried out for a musical in his career and didn't make it. And then he went back into being fences at the same theater. You know, when you start the history, this is crazy when you read the history, yeah. man. The stuff that, that we invented, you know, the things that we did, you know, it was like, wow, you know, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and back then they would have been considered ordinary people. You know, like now we got the super jocks and everything, but you see some of the stuff they did, man. You know, what Bill Russell stood for. You know, um, it's amazing when you look at the history of what we were able to accomplish as a people. And and those people did it with a sense of community. Hmm. You know, it wasn't about me, just me, me, me. You know, it, it, and I think that's what's lacking in our community. I mean, yeah. and to me, that's what made me come up with the top, topic because we don't invest in each other. We don't invest in, and, you know, we say we want to support, and all black businesses are not jacked up. But hmm. we don't even try to make an effort. Yeah, and in my mind, I'm yeah. just, like, thinking, like, man, why don't we... Because, I mean, it's not necessarily, I would say, the the fun part, or it doesn't necessarily get all the glory, but it certainly should, you know? Like, I think we do need to, again, we always kind of talk about athletics because it's easier to talk about for us. But, like, you know, talking about the person that is praising for the practice and the work that they put in and not just, like, the finished product or result. Yeah. I think, like, the enjoying the journey, one, is part of investing, but then, like, kind of from us like maybe to get more people excited about that it's like we start to kind of highlight and speak but, on it more but it's hard to get people excited about about, about work. working yeah <laughs> and i'm not you know and it's funny because gary just said this too